What up brothers, it's Clip King returning for another new review tonight on the figure you see in front of you and as you can see it's Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones by the company 3-0. It was kindly given to me on Saturday by Wyman from 1-6 Bruce, a lot of you guys will know him. It was totally out of blue. He told me Friday via WhatsApp I put something in post and I said to him am I reviewing it, what am I doing with it, he never answered. And then when I received it on Saturday morning, I was like, that thing's come today, what do you want me to do with it? And like, it's for you. I was like, fucking blown away sort of thing. So, like I said, I never expect anything. I do these reviews because I enjoy doing them. I enjoy seeing the figures and I do like the small amount of celebrity or fame, if you want, that it brings. Not that I'm trying to compare myself to anybody of real fame. I'm not saying that, but it's just nice to be known. But like I said, massive thank you to Wyman and Maggie, I will say. Because uh, she's a little bit of an un unsung hero. Um, so yeah, thanks to them both. It, great gesture. A figure I really did like when I saw coming out. But as you know, it is the Octoys that gets the views. So I always do my priorities on what I think will do well for the channel. And then sort of the figures I really want to keep. But like I said, massive thank you. Can't thank him enough. Can't put it into words. It does mean a lot, brother. Thanks a lot for that. So, we'll crack on to the review. Before I do that, I just want to show you a little new game I've invented. Anybody on Facebook knows that Uncle Clipper's own group, once it scale, views and reviews, add me or uh, ask for an invite or whatever, join the group. And you can see, it says just now, I've taken a photo in this pose. I've put it onto Facebook and I've wrote... Game for today. This is fun we have in this group. Game for today. I'm just about to start filming the Tyrion Lannister review. Question is, put the light back on. Question is, what will his total score be? So I just wanted to show I'm not cheating and I'm not going to change it. There's been four people post on it so far, I think. And if anybody's got the score bang on by end of review, they'll get a name check. So you know what I mean. It helps the little people out as well. So uh, I'm all about the uh, the base, no treble. So, let's crack on and get the review started. Right, rolling on to the review. And before I start the source material, I will just say if you've come across expecting any dwarf jokes or little people jokes, I don't think I'll be doing that because at the end of the day, life's too short. And if I did, I feel it would just go over their heads. Um, and I do hear that the dwarf community do look up to me. So, I feel it's right if I don't. I once asked actually what I know about dwarves. Very little. But uh, Peter Dinklage is pretty much the go-to guy now. Pretty much to the point as well where Kenny Baker and Warwick Davis are fucking fuming. They've got to be. And if either could kick that eye, I suspect they would kick his ass. He's taking up all best roles. So, yeah, massive respect to him. <laughs> all jokes aside, sorry, boys, I couldn't resist. I feel like a bad person. But at the end of the day, I feel some of you will be laughing at them jokes. I'm sorry about that. No, roll on, let's talk about it. Yeah, massive respect to Peter Dinklage. He, he gobbles up this role and also he was awesome in X-Men Days of Future Past. So, as an actor, you've got to respect him. As the character, uh, uh, Tyrion Lannister, he's just awesome. He starts off as really, comes across a really spoiled brat and you want to dislike him. But as the series goes on, you sort of grow to really like him and respect him. And he's sort of the reluctant hero, so to speak, and I really like that about him. He's always the one who's put down and sort of outcast, and that makes you feel for him even more. It's like rooting for the underdog. So, yeah, I really do like that about it. Onto the show, I think most people who have seen Game of Thrones would pretty much concede. It's got to be considered one of the best shows of the last 10 years, maybe of all time. I will say, and now my colours to mask, I actually prefer Dexter and uh, True Detective, maybe Ray Donovan, but I would certainly put this in the category with Walking Dead, Blacklist, and that sort of thing, other shows. So yeah, I've got massive respect for the show. I think it's very epic. I think it takes the uh, Lord of the Rings formula and runs with it. I do like that it's clearly set in England. And I also like that the uh, sort of the good guys, the King of the North and uh, the Stark family, are clearly Yorkshiremen, and that makes me so fucking proud. And the Snidey fuckers are them who live down south. So, mecca that what you will. <laughs> Just a little dig there at me Cockney brethren. So, respect that. So, source material-wise, on the character and on the show, I'd pretty much 
go away to a four out of five because I think in years to come, even when this show's run its course and nobody's uh, nobody's watching it no more and we're watching reruns, I think people will still remember it was a show that sort of paved the way along with, like I said, Sopranos going back that far and the likes of Dexter, Walking Dead and other big shows, Breaking Bad, obviously. So, yeah, I would have had to give it a, a four out of five and that was an easy four two. Rolling onto the packaging and I really do like this. Sometimes you'll get a figure and the box just fits it perfectly and I don't mean it fits it snug. I mean the theme of the box just suits it down to a T and I'm thinking of boxes like The Godfather, I always bring it up, the Chris Taylor from Platoon, just something really characteristic about the box which kind of took it to the next level that's the same with this i think 3.0 have done a really good job it's got a really regal look about it as you see the game of thrones title in the uh, gold chrome moving down you see the lion insignia from the family lannister which is wrapped around the box and then at the bottom if i move around let the light get in it says hear me roar lannister I say it's the insignia moves all the way around the box and looks well not overcrowded with graphics but uh, yeah really cool obviously the box doesn't have to be massive because the figure is only small and doesn't bring a lot of uh, extras so yeah just a really nice touch awesome card on the uh, slip cover a bit finer card for the uh, the internal internal box but like I said because the outer card is so good it feels really really sturdy and I would be happy to give the packaging a four out of five rolling on to the likeness let's move up the figure and get to the face anybody who's seen the pictures of this or have seen any reviews so far there is a few out there and some good ones too it's not only Uncle Clipper that's dominating these reviews yeah there is other reviewers out there so yeah have a look around always come back to my channel though because obviously you don't want to eat burgers when you've had steak so bear that in mind but there is other reviewers out there but like i say if you've seen anything of this figure you already know that this head sculpt is fucking boss it's one of the things i can say it's just bang on we always sort of compare to Hot toys or enter bay is it that quality? So they are the standard bearers, and we always say, is it Octo standard? Face-wise, definitely. Paint work, sculpt work, 100%. Like I say, it's Peter Dinklage or Tyrion Lannister, whatever, thrown through. The air, on the other hand, is maybe not Octo's quality. Simply because, if we look around it, the style of it is bang on. I quite like the paintwork on it. The only thing that stops it being what I would consider Hot Toys quality is sort of the, the where Hot Toys use a really, really fine divide for the air, making it look a little bit more realistic. This is a little bit of a chunkier, a chunkier sculpt, if that makes any sense to you. And I know it's down to the style as well. If I move it around, you'll see for the, uh, the curls in the back. I know the... Uh, the style of it makes it look like that, but like I said, the air sculpt, maybe not Octo's quality, but the face definitely, definitely is. The total likeness is an easy five out of five. There's just no doubt. And look at the light in the eyes, and bear in mind, that's with his head down. If we go sculpt up, nice glossy eyes. Just a really, really good head sculpt. And I will say, when I saw this figure, I thought, I'm definitely going to pick that up at some point because I do like the show. And I think with the other figures that they've got coming out from this line, I think it would uh, would look really nice displayed with some of the other characters. I've seen there is a Sean Bean figure, the Ned Stark coming out sometime soon. And seeing this gives me great confidence that the Sean Bean will be really good too. So that is how strong the head sculpt is. It would make me interested in the line, whereas before it was sort of a passing interest. So massive shout out to 3-0. Awesome head sculpt, definitely up to his quality. The air could be a tiny bit better, but it still wouldn't stop me giving this figure a five out of five for likeness. Right, rolling on to the outfit. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine the outfit 
and go straight into the uh, articulation simply because I'm going to do something a little bit different for you because I haven't seen this in another person's review and you've got to stay ahead of the trend. I'm going to strip the figure down on camera and I hope it doesn't take me long. So as you see, he has a faux leather belt, the plastic belt buckle, a bit oversized because of how it folds when it's wrapped around him. So I've already took that off. I will show you the tunic or the upper part of the tunic. It has the gold clasps down the outside as you see which do look into each other but also on the inside it has the black metal clasps and then the loop at that side so you hook it in on the inside first and then feed that through which makes it look really flush to his body and does look really nice you can see it's sort of semi-lined on the insides really nice touch and then the upper section sort of goes to there so if we can move that back let's take his upper section off i will show you the hand of the king pin that's on his uh, upper right chest and really nicely done nice and close for you really nice touch i'll take that off so that is off then you see on the inside of that we have the lower part of his tunic attached to this sort of stitched in waistcoat a really long looking neck now that it's off with this scarf wrapped round and then the shirt that fits there so let's untie these they are just laced as you can see which would be pretty authentic also i think i think what we'll do is pop his hands now and then we'll Inside the it's tied there is velcro. So again, it's a complete shirt. I will say as well, and I'll show you this in a minute. If you look at the material on the shirt, it's got this coarse feel about it, and again, very, very accurate looking and very regal looking. Awesome. Uh, cut and stitch as you would expect figures at this price point and again you see all the bottom bits lined so really nice touch on that you see here he just has this wrap round sort of scarf around his neck which would I would think that if I was to oh, pop the head Take off the scarf and you see. I'll go on to his body in a minute. Just put that back in. I'll do that in a minute. And then the lower part is a sculpted boot, black trousers with the drawstring. So we'll undo them. I'm guessing that they pop off, which they do. That was lucky, weren't it? Because I didn't really give him a chance not to. And then, obviously, when you've untied the trousers, Velcro fly, and that comes off. So, the outfit. Like I said, I have stripped it down, so that'll give you an idea how to, how to dress it. And... Uh, what it looks like individually and I will say on the outfit I'm giving it a four everything that's done is done really well but it's not the most intricate work we've seen if it had been a little bit more intricate or I don't know I don't know what word for it a bit more complex then I would be happy to go to a five because there's nothing wrong with it it's really tidy looking obviously when he's dressed the layers don't make him look too bulky so really really good touch uh, I will also talk the sculpted boots they are an art sculpt but then they have the real leather wrappings as you can see so yeah nicely done you expect them to hinder the articulation because obviously he's only got short legs and the boots will go up pretty much to his knee and they do just work on a ball joint so on the outfit i am going to give him a four out of five right so we'll crack now straight onto the articulation as you can see i've split this down for a reason simply because 
the easy thing to do would have just been to give us a shorter 1-6 scale body. And by that I mean normal proportions. And I, I'm trying to you choose my words carefully here because I'm not trying to say that there's anything wrong with little people's figure or physiques or anything like that. But as you know, the limb, the limb length is shorter yet bulkier. So basically what I'm trying to say is they've not just given us a kid's body or a like a, a six inch figure body. They've basically gone to town and reproduced a little person's or a dwarf, whatever you want to call it, whatever you feel comfortable saying, say that. Like I said, I, I kicked off with some jokes, but they were just cheap shots, I suppose. So I'm trying to also be a little bit sensitive and a little bit politically correct, even though it's not really my style. But I've got I've done this because I want to give massive props to uh, 30 for doing this. So let's crack into it. We've talked about the head sculpt. You'll notice undressed, the neck is really long. It does sit on a ball joint at the bottom and at the top, which gives awesome articulation. If we look at the upper body, you see it does feel stiff, although there is a divide there. I think there is a ball joint in there, but it doesn't feel very loose, so I'm not going to push away at that. So, yeah. Looking at the bulky upper arm and forearm, really thick, nice looking elbow joint, so it looks really sturdy. Good rotation at the arms, up and down, and then some movement inside the shoulder. Again, obviously, same with it, same on the other hand. The hands, I'll talk about the hands more when I get to the extras, but you see, they do move freely. I will show at this point as well, the difference in colour between the uh, the body and the hand. The body matches the head and neck really well, but for some reason the hand is off. Rotation at the upper pelvis, see the joints on the inner pelvis. Again, the short, stocky uh, thigh. The quadricep and then the double bend knee. Obviously, short limbs at the bottom going down to ankle pegs, which go into the boot. So, massive respect to them because, like I said, they have recreated this body really well. And I'm thinking, could they use this body for something else other than dwarf style figures? Now, I'm going to say this, and like I say, I, I, I'm not being even tongue in cheek here. But I think they might have developed the best body for this size figure. So I'm thinking, right, going forward, what could a body like this be used for? Obviously, any dwarf figure. So Gimli from Lord of Rings. The Peter Dinklage character. Uh, is it Trask from Days of Future Past, if they wanted to do that? Maybe even something like Ewoks, something like that. Wouldn't be too much of a stretch from this body. And I would say buy this body with confidence because it feels solid. It feels heavy like anybody who's felt a Blitzway body. You feel it and you think, yep, yeah, that's not a 10 bob, I'm in me body. That is a good quality body. And 3-0 have definitely done this with this body. And like I said, there's no real loss in articulation. Although this uh, ab crunch section works weird and it doesn't do a great deal of anything as you can see. But I don't know if there's a jam in there or what's happened, but I don't want to I don't want to pressure it and risk this figure. So yeah. Uh, only because when the boots are on, the ankle movement is non-existent. I'm moving this body down, or this figure as a whole, I'm moving the articulation down to a four out of five. Had the boots been split and would have worked a little bit better than they do, I would have easily give this body a five out of five. Rolling on to extras, and probably go straight into value. Just show you the pose first. Obviously, he don't come with his own throne. So I've just put him into Tony Montana, Scarface's throne. Just to make him look a little bit more beastly. He's got his goblet of wine. He's got a big fat stogie on. And he's just kicking back and relaxing. Checking out the bitches of Westeros. You know? So yeah, that's what I went for. Now, it would have been nice if a throne came. It would have been nice if a cigar came or something else that he would use. It would have been nice if they give you the exclusive dagger as standard. 
with the uh, sheath for it, but they never. This is the standard version, and although it's a gift and I do appreciate it, I've got to be honest in the review, and so the standard version don't bring a lot. So what does it bring? Obviously the figure, which I've pretty much told you is awesome in most categories. It brings the goblet and an hand to hold it. It brings the book, which is completely sculpted and is quite heavy, so you can't open it with the... Uh, an history of great sieges of Westeros. You see, there's the uh, writing also on the side. The hand that sort of holds the book against him or under his arm is the one that I've got the cigar in. And then he only has two relaxed hands. Now, everybody's picked up on these hands and said they're terrible. I disagree, to be honest. Not, I don't disagree. I don't disagree completely. I actually think the sculpt isn't too bad. It's a little bit choppy, but I've got to be honest and say, they do look very characteristic of dwarf style hands. What I don't understand is the shocking paintwork on it. And not only that, the base paintwork is bad, then it's black washed to the point where, if you look at his hands and his face, they're just total different skin tones. Now, I know it's not unusual for people's hands to be a slightly different colour to the face. Obviously, your face is in sun most of the time, and it would be a face that would be weathered more so than your hands. But, I don't know. It's sort of the black wash emphasises how choppy the hand sculpt is. I think if that hand sculpt would have been how it were, but not had the black wash, then I think it would have been acceptable. These, they are a little bit messy, so I agree to a degree, but not... That, that worst hands never no more sort of thing so yeah what i do think like i said total lack of accessories which will stop a lot of people buying it i think especially when you had to get the exclusive version i don't know the difference between the standard or the exclusive version to get the extra dagger and hand for the dagger and the sheath for the dagger which went onto the belt that should have been standard for me um but it is what it is on the extras Normally, if it's got a set of hands, I would give it a one. Now, I can't even class this as a spare set of hands because it's just a spare right and a spare left. So it's not like you get four or five or six hands and then they throw in the book, which, like I said, although it does look nice and you can pose him with it, it's not going to blow your mind. Same with the, uh, the goblet. So I am only going to give the extras a one out of five, and I think that's more than fair. Straight on to value, I will start by saying the fact that this was free to me, I would have to give the value a 5. But because it's not going to be free to everybody, I am going to score it for your guys' sake, if that makes sense. I will say, I checked eBay for the price of this guy, and you can pretty much pick him up shipped for around £100, maybe £110. I think for that, if you're a fan of the show, I think it's a definite pickup for you, because he's a, a top character, he's probably... I think Ned Stark's a good one. I think a Jon Snow would be a good one. Maybe Jamie Lannister, Tyrion Lannister. And then I would struggle after that. Who else I would want from it? So he is a key character from the show. Uh, he's a top actor, like I said. So I think fans of this show will want to get it. And I think looking at it, they switch on eBay and think, mm, I can get it. Shipped to my house for £110 in the days when Hot Toys are going for somewhere around the £200 mark. I think this is a must pick up for a fan of the show. On the flip side, I think that it will be available for quite a long time. And I think that you're not going to flip much of a profit on it. And the fact that it brings so few extras or accessories, there's not much bang for your buck. So I'm going straight down middle and I'm going to give the value a three out of five. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to sum it up, but I'm also going to have a quick flick through Facebook Seal's got a great mind like Uncle Clipper and called the score right, and that geezer is going to get a shout out. Right, so let the truth be known. Look out for your names. Looking. Okay. Google that name, if you will. I mean, not just move on to that. Oops, I can't. I'm trying to do it left handed. Just Google that name, and you'll recognise that Uncle Clipper has only got his son a celebrity fan club so i'm not gonna say no more because it's not it's not my place to do so but let's move up the figure got 25 and a possible 35 so you guys are close you, you're not as fucking stupid as you look some of you here we have a winner 
Here we go. Look at him. Look at that lad there. Glenn Wilkinson's only guessed 25, give no rhyme or reason. He's just guessed he's right on the money. Anybody else? A smart bastard. Look at this lad here. What's he gone for? Packaging he got wrong. Lightness he got right. Costume he got wrong. Articulation he got wrong. Extras he got wrong. Value he got right. All in all, he's not done a bad job, but missed on too many categories, you fucking idiot. So I'll move on. Another one here. Tony Earwaker, I'm guessing 25. Source, lightness and value, all been strong points. Well, I think a lot of people thought I'd get top value because it was a free gift, but I did it for your sake, boys. Then I? I didn't do it for Uncle Clipper's sake, I did it for your sake. All close, like I say. Tony Earwaker and Glenn Wilkinson. Well done, boys. You're nearly as smart as me. Not quite, but nearly. But well, another review done for now. This is Uncle Rickster and Tyrion Lannister, and we are out of here.